we want to talk about your stint as an entrepreneur. You took advantage of the urban cowboy craze that was going on, the disco craze, and opened up BJ's star-studded honky-tonk on I-30 in southwest Little Rock, and it was a huge success. You opened it in 1981. Mm-hmm. But it was in 19, with the partners, Bill, like I said, Bill MacArthur and James Nelson. Right. When you opened it, you left the Country Cowboy. Country Club, right. Country Club mm-hmm. on Roosevelt. Right. And opened up your own place with your two partners. Mm-hmm. And it made Bob Trout mad. And he hired, is that right? Yeah. And, yeah, he, yeah. Okay, and he hired a hitman. He got some feathers <laughs> Flying, I'll tell you, wow. <laughs> did. And you uh, and he hired a hitman to take you out. Tell right. us how that happened. It just happened. Uh, Bill and James approached me one night, and we began talking about going into business with a nightclub that Arkansas had never seen the likes of before. And uh, we shared our views on things that we would like to have done or would like to see done, and. The, decor, et cetera, et cetera. And I remember telling them, boys, all I care about, we got to have a big dance floor. We don't want it real fancy, but we want it clean. We want it nice. But uh, we don't need chiffon stuff on table for tablecloths. Strobe lights. If, yeah, if we're lucky, uh, you know, we can get some... Uh, what are they call uh, an oleum tablecloth? And anyway, that's how BJ's was born. And the ladies uh, of uh, the wives of all of us talked about it, and we put the dream together and pied for it. And lucky enough, we got a permit, and away we went. Not, Boy, you not, really went away too, not, man. It was a huge success. Not knowing what to do, you know, but just going on the way that things that we loved so Wasn't bob trout was jealous uh yes ma'am so well, how did he how did he have someone come attack you and how well there were several ways you had been he, in business like a year i think when he decided to put an end to it well he's not even that long he started uh, uh with you know wanting to sue us for copyright things and et cetera, et cetera. and of course that was all handled and taken care of it was just a long process and then one night uh, when I got off work and walked out the door, uh, I was uh, approached by a person. And uh, uh, that first night I got out and they had uh, cut my tires and I had a bad, I had a flat tire off of a bad tire, which I really thought was just happened. You know, the second night is the night that uh, the boy approached with a bat and I never thought nothing, and next thing I knew, uh, I was on the sidewalk. That bat had uh, crushed you know, your face. Crushed my face, and uh, he, of course, broke and ran. And as it all shook out and turned out, there were like four people that played in it. Actually, five, and uh, but one person that actually did the swinging and with a bat and all the other stuff, but. Uh, Bob had hired those people, as it was proven in court. And, and he uh, said either kill him or make it so he can never speak again. Yeah, that's what they had said. That they but you forgave him. the young man, that the, mon- the man that swung the bat and hit you. Yes, you you I, forgave I him in court. I you did. asked for leniency. I did. And, uh, you know, the that whole situation, I don't really know how I want to try to explain it or how to explain it. You know, this fella, and I'm not going to call his name because I pray that he has done what I wanted him to do, and that is to become a, a citizen that could get by in life and, and do stuff the right way. And his brother uh, and his aunt might have been his mother, but they were so sweet and kind to me. And his brother is the reason that he was turned in. He took him and, and uh, took him to to the county jail and had him tell the story. And uh, I just, I, I had so much respect for them. Number one, you know, taking your brother and knowing you're going to go to the penitentiary for what he's done. And his mother, 
or his aunt, and they've known the same and still still stood on the right principle of life. Wow, that's great. You know, it is. That so, is right. That's great. You know, it became where I had a lot of love and respect for them, and it also went, I wanted to help. So how long did he do in penitentiary? How long? He was down there about two years. That's pretty good. What happened mm-hmm. to Bob Trout? He went to the penitentiary. How long was he? He was, uh, I believe, sent down there for like 12 years, and I don't remember Is he, how much time that he served there. So who found you on the parking lot? Uh, the guard that worked at the station when after uh, they hit me, and I went back inside and— Oh, you went back inside? Yeah, yeah. I got up and uh, walked back. I thought in you the couldn't door. breathe; you had to be trached. Well, that was that was later at the hospital. Oh. Yeah, that w- was true. But uh, I got back inside, and of course, uh, when he looked up, he said, "Oh my God!" Uh, and uh, he got ambulances and police. Got you to the and, hospital. Uh, yeah. How long were you in the hospital? Uh, well, when I got to the hospital, they did all their tests and the stuff they had to do, and I'm not going to lie to you. That's some of the worst pain, probably. Really? Pain but, meds uh, couldn't even stop it? No, not at that time. And uh, he got his money's worth on that part. But <laughs> they, uh, you know, the medical people, they took me to Baptist Hospital, and they were just tremendous. I can't tell you how kind and how good that hospital treated me and my family and how well they got how quickly they got me back up. But you were in there for three weeks. Well, that was the first time. Oh. Uh, once once they found out what all was wrong and, and all, we had to wait for swelling to go down and then the surgery, and then I stayed, and then we had to come back, and, you know, they pulled the, what they call the apparatus where they had uh, put my face back together oh. and uh, didn't make me look like Robert Redford, but... Anyway, they they did <laughs> a, a tremendous me. job, cons- you know, f- what they had to work with. And anyway, uh, I just it, it was a it, it was a, took a lot of time. And you got to understand when you when you're in those situations, you're awfully bitter at first. Really, awfully bitter. And as time wore on, I looked at it in in uh, different eyes. So we went on and we went through the court system and and, uh, some of it worked fine, some of it don't. Uh, But all of the participants, they went to the penitentiary and got their time. And then when they started the parole system in their favor, they I would go to the court and tell them what I thought. And uh, And you asked for leniency. I did. And forgive them. I did. So that's how the recovery affected you. It It deepened your faith. Well, you know, I have always been uh, been brought up with knowing that there is a is a supreme being that controls everything that we do in our lives, and I believe that with all my heart. Uh, I don't believe that people just come here and die and go away. You know, everybody has the right to believe, but that did the way they want to. But that is what got me through my life, all my life. 